the inside story on the issues that affect you and your community. This is Local 12 Newsmakers. Good morning and welcome to Local 12 Newsmakers. I'm Dan Hurley. Even before Ohio Governor Kasich signed Senate Bill 5 into law back on March the 31st, it was clear that a referendum attempting to repeal it would be the most contested and most important issue on the ballot this year. That repeal referendum is known as Issue 2. Last week, Local 12 reporter Jeff Hirsch, who is Math Challenge, prepared this report to clarify the relationship of Issue 2 and Senate Bill 5. As I think back to high school and college, math was not my best subject. But I am going to tell you right now without a shadow of a doubt why 5 equals 2. Here at the Hamilton County Board of Elections and at other boards statewide, early mail-in votes are arriving. In Hamilton County, nearly 46,000 such ballots have been requested. Another 2,100 people have voted early in person. A big issue driving the turnout. Kill the bill! Kill the bill! Senate Bill 5. Despite thousands of protesters at Ohio's Capitol, the Republican-controlled legislature passed and GOP Governor John Kasich signed the law. It does have national implications in a variety of ways. Senate Bill 5 severely restricts collective bargaining rights of Ohio's 350,000 public employees, like police officers, firefighters, and teachers. But while the law is called Senate Bill 5, the voter-generated repeal measure is issue 2 on the ballot. Like I said, 5 equals 2. The Board of Elections has received phone calls from voters who are not sure what's what. Yes, I think confusion can exist. Xavier University political scientist Gene Beaupre says that confusion could be important if the vote on issue 2 is close. The two sides have raised $23 million for campaign advertising. The other thing that might be to their advantage would be that it's towards the top, it is at the top of the ballot. And so voters come in kind of fresh and have an opportunity. You get down farther down the ballot and there's voter fatigue, if you will, but here there's some attention paid. Both sides have worked very hard to make it clear how voters are supposed to vote. But for the record, here is issue two. A yes vote retains Senate Bill 5. A no vote repeals Senate Bill 5. Any confusion with five being two, or is it pretty obvious to you? It's pretty obvious. There was no confusion on your part with five oh, and two? Lot, no. As of now, the polls show that the no voters will prevail on issue two. If that's the case, then five will also equal zero. Jeff Hirsch, Local 12 News. Yeah, Hirsch is believe me, mathematically challenged. We will devote all of Newsmakers this morning to the substance of Issue 2 and Senate Bill 5. To do that, I am joined this morning by former Cincinnati City Council member Jeff Birding, who is representing the supporters of Issue 2, known as Building a Better Ohio, and former City Council member and County Commissioner David Pepper, who is representing We Are Ohio, which is leading the Vote No on Issue 2 campaign. Welcome back to Good Newsmakers. Uh, you two have know each other well. You know uh, the Jeff and the, David show is on the road. Yes, uh, <laughs> it's on the road. Jeff, let's start with you. You're supporting issue two, so yes. a yes vote retains uh, Senate Bill and actually puts Senate Bill five into action right. because it's not been in action. Yes. Um, give me what you believe are, is the essential reason why maybe you want to do two reason why. Uh, issue two ought to be passed. Sure. I lost the endorsement of the Democratic Party on council because I wasn't willing to lay off police and fire to balance the budget. Uh, the fact is, is that our personnel costs, mostly contained in, in union contracts, are far beyond what kind of money the city has anymore. Uh, we have a math problem. Our labor costs are high, our revenues are low, and the solution under the current system is either lay off police and fire, lay off teachers, or raise taxes in a struggling economy on the middle class. And I think those are bad options. Issue two, by asking our public employees, which represent less than 7% of the employees in the state, to sacrifice a little by paying more for their health insurance, still less than what we pay in the private sector, pay for their guaranteed pensions, their, their share, uh, to not have annual raises based just on how long they've been working, but actually based on their performance. Uh, those kind of reasonable um, sacrifices, and they are sacrifices, uh, bring them still in line with the private sector uh, and allow us to balance our budgets without raising taxes and without laying off. Okay, before we get to a lot of the specifics there, David, 
What's wrong with that? Well, I think the reason you're seeing so many people rally against Senate Bill 5, and Jeff mentioned it, the polls are clearly dramatically against it. That's because a whole lot of Republicans and a majority of independents and Democrats are strongly opposed to it, including folks like Bill Cunningham, Bill Seitz, we've had on the show, is because it goes way beyond what Jeff just described. It's not simply a few, you know, a few tailoring here or there of how much people may pay for benefits. Uh, it gets rid of collective bargaining for all intents and purposes. Well, that's not there, true. Jeff will say it doesn't, but there's literally. If you, if well, you okay, want, well, let's let David let first, finish. and we'll give you a chance. If you if you look at the process under Senate Bill Five, there is no negotiation. Basically, management makes a proposal, and if the union disagrees, the management gets to implement that proposal. That's not any normal negotiation. Mike Brown wouldn't want to negotiate that way. He wouldn't agree to that kind of setup. The other thing it does is uh, it muzzles our public servants. You know, when I call 911, I do it because those are the experts. They're the professionals. They know about my safety. I don't call a city council member if I want to be safe. I call the police officer. I call the firefighter. Let's talk about but that. But at the, at, the, at the table, the bargaining table, under Senate Bill 5, it's now illegal for police officers, firefighters, nurses to bring up issues such as staffing, which not only affect their work environment, but actually affect all of our safety. For instance, if I don't go to the hospital every week, hopefully, I don't know how many nurses there are there. The number of nurses d determines how safe that hospital is if there's an emergency, if I'm there. But, and the nurses do know this, so I want well, them bringing up these that. issues because, sure. because they're doing it not just for themselves but for all of our safety. So it's both unfair to workers as well as unsafe. Okay, the, the, the issue here, I think we, we've now clarified, because I do think the essential issue is around the collective bargaining Absolutely. question. It's not around a particular salary level or benefit or whatever, retirement, health, it's around the collective bargaining. So what is the status from your point of view of collective bargaining under Senate Bill 5? That, uh, the issue to collective bargaining law reads the same as the 1983 law passed by the Democrats. Uh, it reads that public employees can bargain collectively with their public employers for wages, terms, hours, and working conditions exactly the same it hasn't changed the only difference is is that what is defined as working conditions has been added over time over the last 30 years to include things like having three months of vacation uh, generous leave and payout policies 93 million dollars in the city of Cincinnati uh, and and the like and so some of those working conditions are limited uh, but the collective bargaining is exactly the same now, David says, well, because we took out binding arbitration, issue two takes out binding arbitration, which allows an unelected third party in some other part of the state to dictate to a city what it has to pay and if it has to raise taxes and if it has to borrow money, uh, which David's defending. Issue two says that ultimately the taxpayers have the right to control through their elected representatives how they spend their money. So if, there's, if there is a can't come to an agreement, there's no binding arbitration, but in this particular case, management and the elected in council, if we're talking about the city, they get to make the decision. Ultimately, the voters would, because you can put it on the ballot, uh, and the voters can decide which of the two proposals, the union proposal versus the, the management proposal, they prefer. That's and let's true. be clear, no, that is true, and let, okay. let's be clear. You have elected officials like David, whose futures in the Democratic Party are critical to have union support. All these politicians around the state, including <clears throat> some Republicans who like the FOP endorsement and the fire endorsement, are against issue two. Just to believe, David, that all of a sudden these elected officials aren't going to be fair to the unions is, is, defies common sense. The fact is elected officials who like those union endorsements are going to do very well by their union employees based David. on what they can afford. Well, if that's the case, then this doesn't solve the problem you're saying it'll solve. But, but the bottom line is Jeff just agreed. At the end of every negotiation under Senate Bill 5, if there's an impasse, the politicians just pick the result. Of course, they're going to pick the, the very result they propose. So there's an incentive now. Think about it. If you, if you want to, let's say you're on city council, you're a big streetcar supporter. Let's say you want to cut 10% of salaries to pay for something else. Your incentive is actually to propose the most unreasonable proposal possible. That way you get an impasse with your unions because they won't agree to it. And then you get to pick the proposal you made for the next three years. That is not, as a senator from northern Ohio, Republican said, that leaves a union in a position not of collective bargaining but collective begging. They have le zero leverage. Rick Perry and John Huntsman, after this whole Mitt Romney thing a couple weeks ago where he wouldn't say anything, they took one look at this law and John Huntsman, now they supported it because they're running in this primary, but they took one look at the law and John Huntsman looking at the law said, I support John Kasich's union busting bill. 
And Rick Perry said, I support John Kasich's right to work bill, which gets rid of unions. Well, Th this basically, th these are they folks that they, they, they do. They, they looked at it, they know exactly well, what they're right. talking about. And by the way, one other thing we have to mention this only goes to the voters if the politicians break Ohio law by agreeing to a contract they can't afford. The idea that this goes to a referendum no matter what no, is not the true. higher offer, David. No, if it, the politicians choose the higher offer, that's going to cost more If they more choose money. the higher offer and they can't afford it, and it would break the bank, then it would go to the voters. That's illegal right now. So you're saying basically there'd be a referendum if the politicians were dumb no, enough if they to, the agree, to agree the higher offer that broke the bank. Okay. Isn't one of the problems... Yeah, you got to read the law because I have says, read it. Isn't one of the problems that, right, what we got right now, David, that politicians are on a short cycle, I mean, take city council, you, you can only be there for eight years, so your interest is to settle in negotiations favorably and um, therefore not look at the long run. So isn't there a built-in bias against hard bargaining right now. Uh, well, if you look at my own track record in Hamlin County, we've reduced spending by 270 to 210 million dollars. By way off. By, by wage off Hold on, employees. let me finish. By wage freezes, we had to balance the budget. By wage freezes, by, by um, furloughs, you name it. But big picture, I think you're right on. The big picture problem in our, all of our government levels is the politicians wasting money. Is it the, the, hold on, yeah. agreeing to things they can't agree to. In this whole bill, it's not about saying, well, the stadium problem is what's hurting the county. Coin gates what's hurt the state. Politicians being short-sighted. We know that's what's costing everything. This whole bill is about politicians saying, no, 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 watch the TV ads. It's the public servants. It's the police officers, the firefighters. It's not I us. So that. you're right, big picture. The politicians are more the no, problem okay, than very the quickly, police and Jeff. fire. The, the problem under the current system, which is why we need issue two, is that politicians over time have put these expensive perks, expensive benefits in the contract, and under the current system, we can't take them out. And so the way issue two allows us to reset the contracts best based on what we can afford okay. at this time. Okay, isn't the other side, I ask a question of David about time frame, isn't the other side, to be perfectly honest about what's happening here, is that this is an attack on the very unions that tend to support, on balance, uh, by, by the Republican establishment, those unions that have become critical for democratic politicians, particularly the teachers union. I mean, there's a public, there's a p partisan component of this that I think has to be talked about openly. Look, if it was an attack on the unions who I've always worked very well with, I certainly wouldn't support it. Uh, the fact is, is that I don't want to lay off members of the unions as an elected official. I don't want to lay off those young firefighters. I don't want to lay off those young police officers. What about you know, teachers? I don't want to lay off teachers. And let me just say, President Obama uh, strongly supports performance pay for teachers. Uh, so, look, the fact is, is that as an elected official, we don't have enough money. States and cities and, and townships, counties, school districts are going bankrupt. We just don't have the money. The firefighters said in their, uh, in their contract, I have it right here at my feet in writing, that, they, that the city of Cincinnati should raise taxes, they should raise property income taxes, they should close the health clinics, close the rec centers, not pave the streets in order to give them a 4% wage increase. Well, I, just, I disagree that that's a good prescription. Okay. And, well, and the fact is, that negotiation they can, ended they can zero no, it didn't. Yes, no, it, it didn't. didn't. No, it didn't, David. They still got their annual step increases and, and, which you and guys did get for. the raises. No, I voted against it, but no. you're right. Your point is the accurate Zero. one, Dan, which is that elected officials want to be good to the unions, but currently under this system we well, have no Some elected officials want to be and good Dan, to some Dan, unions. Dan, and this puts more power in the hands of politicians, so if Jeff's right that the, big, the, that the big problem is the politicians, before there's at least an independent arbitrator, which by the way only acts in 2% of the negotiations. But, right, but if, right, exactly. So why, how, why is it head. such a terrible problem if it only goes two percent of the time? But but the bigger because picture is Jeff is telling well. us all that the big problems of politicians. Uh, generally, I actually agree. Well, why would we give more power to the politicians here and tell police and firefighters you not only have no collective bargaining rights, but you also can't even talk about things like the number of okay. nurses it takes to have a safe hospital or the number of firefighters it takes and to put out a fire. We're going to be able to come back and elaborate some of those issues, but I have to. Uh, we we work in the private sector, so we have to take a break. Stay tuned. After the break, Jeff and David will return to continue this discussion. Okay, that's fine. We're good. I went a little bit long, but that's okay.
Welcome back. This morning we are focused on Ohio Issue 2, the statewide referendum on whether or not to retain Senate Bill 5, the measure that severely restricts the ability of public sector unions to bargain on wide range of issues. I am joined this morning by Jeff Birding, representing the Vote Yes on Issue 2 campaign, uh, supporting implementation of Senate Bill 5, and David Pepper, representing the Vote No on Issue 2 campaign, urging a repeal of Senate B Bill 5. Like all major campaigns, this one has been waged with 30 seconds television commercials and YouTube commercials. I want to show competing commercials and allow the opponent to comment. We begin with a ad featuring a teacher urging yes vote on issue two. Opponents of issue two are saying it'll harm education, but as I tell my students, you can't believe everything you hear. The truth, issue two will improve education. Good teachers will finally be rewarded for the job they do and the results that they achieve in the classroom, not getting raises just for showing up. Not all teachers want this change, but isn't it about time the educators who teach our children get paid to deliver? Vote yes on issue two. David? Um, yeah, it, it, he doesn't mention he also happens to be the Republican chair of the county he lives in, but... Um, is he a teacher? I, I believe he is, but okay. more importantly, um, what they're not telling you about Senate Bill 5 and Issue 2 is it's a huge state takeover of local school decision making. You know, here in Cincinnati, he talks about performance in teachers. Our school board and superintendent, we have the number one ranked urban school district in the state, so they, I think, know what they're doing. Our superintendent's very talented, has worked with our school union for years, and they've come up with a locally designed, locally agreed to system of how you would do some of what he talked about, have teachers pay, pay get for pay for performance. And rather than simply letting, and that's happening around the state as, as Ohio has succeeded in getting race to the top funds. Right. Well, these, we have a bunch of part-time legislators who have said, forget what you all have done, we're taking over. That's not true. It is true, no, it's Jeff. Not, David. The, the, the law, law requires, the, the law says now that school boards must do the following five things and must consider, consider, uh, consider. consider shall consider, and I'm a lawyer, and I'll tell you, they, now they have to consider all these new things and really throw out a lot of what they've done. So whatever you think of education and performance-based pay, I'd rather have it be a local issue than a bunch of part-time legislators, most of whom are not educators, dictating to everyone in the and state how to do it. Isn't the issue here that, because I think this, this commercial, when it plays in Cincinnati, rings because, just as David said, the Cincinnati Public Schools and the unions working for a long time have come up. They've, they've been able to negotiate this. Absolutely, but they still get their step increases for longevity pay. They get an annual uh, wage increase just for based on tenure. They still have layoffs just based on tenure. In Pickerington, five of the last teachers of the year all just got laid off because they didn't have tenure. What David doesn't say is President Obama would support the, every word of that television ad. Uh, the fact <laughs> it, it would because it's pay for performance. He would support he, what he, we're uh, doing, which is I, locally, I speak. locally speak, led David. reform. He may support it, it, pay for performance. That's right, and that's what that ad speaks to. And the fact is, is that in the law, Dan, it but says. But the question here is, says, how do you get no, to no, it? No, no, that's right. And in the law, it says that superintendents will work with their local school districts and their local teachers unions to come up with a pay for performance system. It is not a top down, David. That's just completely bogus. And I just want to <laughs> add that the Cleveland Plain Dealer and the Columbus Dispatch have said that David, the no vote no campaign, is intellectually dishonest, it lacks credibility, and their ads are false. They well, said that about me? I can't believe about that. Your ad, about your they, they require five criteria that every... They don't every, require it. They, they say do. Should shall consider, consider. I mean, There should be guidelines. That's pretty clear. Race for the top okay. has guidelines, David. Okay. Let's take a look at a, right. uh, another uh, commercial. This commercial focuses on uh, a different set of public workers, firefighters. Great. When there's an emergency, we need to be ready. When we put our trust in our equipment, our training, and most of all, our fellow firefighters. But issue two makes it illegal for us to negotiate for enough firefighters to do the job. Fewer firefighters means slower response times. And that can mean the difference between life and death. Issue two makes it harder for us to do our jobs. And that's not safe for us or the neighborhoods that we serve. When the call comes in, let's make sure Ohio firefighters are ready. Vote no on issue two. Thank let's you. start, Jeff, with let's, you. Let's get some facts. First of all, only 12% of public safety contracts in Ohio have minimum staffing conditions. If it was the life and death issue that they're saying in their television ads, it'd be in every contract. Number two, the FBI and the National Fire Administration have said there's zero public safety difference between states with collective bargaining and states with no collective bargaining. Three, 
Issue two allows fire chiefs and police chiefs to determine how they staff based on the amount of resources, the money that they have available. Four, in contracts with minimum staffing, it's been found across Ohio, including here in Cincinnati, that those minimum staffing requirements are, are, uh, are misused by the fire unions to allow someone to call in sick one day and then the next guy calls in sick in an abuse of overtime. A Cincinnati audit said it's an abuse of overtime. Again, I think voters just need to be smart. What is the biggest threat to public safety? The firefighter paying 15% for his health insurance and 10% for his pension, or the city closing the firehouse or browning out the firehouse because we ran out of money to staff it? David? I have no idea why you'd want to muzzle Doug Stern or other firefighters being a from being able to say, we want to have four firefighters on the truck because that's the safe way to put out a fire. Uh, if it only happens, and hold on a second. Chief. If it only ha no, I want them to be able to negotiate at a bargaining table. I don't want them to have to beg for it. If it only happens in 12 percent of the contracts, then what's the big problem? Obviously, in those 12 percent, it came up and it was important. But if in the other 88 percent, why you'd say we don't want it at all, even though it's only happening 12 percent of the time, is beyond me. In those 12 percent of the cases where there've been nurses or firefighters. It sounds like we're all glad they were able to bring it up. That's a good thing. They needed to insist on staffing levels. If this was such an unreasonable and awful thing they were doing, I think you'd see it more. You're seeing it come up when it needs to come up. But why you would say, you know, Jeff, you, you I didn't trust... answer the question. Which is a bigger threat to public safety, 15% and 10%, or closing firehouses because the cities ran out of money? Right. Are, are those the choices? Are those the only no, choices? No. Issue Jeff, two gives Jeff, you another you choice to say we're running out Jeff of money and we're going we're to keep. The keep. major reason you're seeing layoffs in the last three, unemployment in Ohio has gone up for the last three of the last five months, first time in several years. Why? Because public employees across the state are being laid off. That's not, not true. out of the. It is true. Look at the numbers. Two because, percent for because public employees of, hold on a second. versus eleven percent. Let me finish my second, because John Kasich's budget gutted local government. And That's why we're seeing layoffs. We had deficits in Cincinnati every year. Unemployment. Okay, okay. Well, before, okay. before Governor Kasich's budget and Ted Strickland cut local government. Are there? Not like John are Kasich there did. local, state? I, I guess they would be state, state or federal, like OSHA standards on something like fire about what the size of crews yes. must be. Are there, are there minimums? The only enforceable standard in Ohio is through collective bargaining. So it, without that, you're left to a bunch of part-time councils across the state who are facing tough budgets saying, uh, we saw this in Xenia about a year ago. There's a, ta there's a tape meeting where they started saying, well, maybe we'll just let firefighters buy their own equipment like carpenters do. And I mean, we're, we're going to be left to no example. standards. In Chillicothe, a binding arbitrator said to a city, you have to pay a wage increase and more benefits for the firefighters, and you have the money to do it. You can raise taxes. They put a levy on the ballot. The voters voted it down. They didn't feel like they could afford it. They start closing firehouses. Well, well, That's let me, the threat to public safety. Let me ask safety. this. Let me, let me just get at something different. Senate Bill 5, Issue 2, focuses on sort of frontline people in all of these areas, teachers, whatever. Right. Just take a look at Hamilton County. You know, 39 local uh, governments, mm -hmm. uh, 22 local school districts. If we started thinking smart about collaboration, cooperation, Absolutely. and merger, and getting rid of some of that middle management, rather than putting it, taking it out on the frontline people. Okay. Isn't there another way to approach some of these things and think about Absolutely. them creatively? Okay. I, first of all, I think Dave and I have a track record where that's exactly what we would agree, right. okay? We would agree. I would just offer this. Under the current, under many uni, can, existing union contracts, governments are not even allowed to have those kind of conversations. They're prohibited in the union contract. Issue two says no, that, abs that prohibition can absolutely not be in a union contract. Let me just say, Dan, if you laid off every state employee in the state of Ohio, you'd save 9% of the budget. If you laid them off, not just lowered their, their, their salaries. So the point is, there's a whole lot of spending on a whole lot of other things, including, by the way, these guys who are passing all this stuff and talking big game in Columbus. The top people in Kasich's cabinet, some of the top staff in the Senate, aren't getting cut, they're getting raises at the same time. So there are all these other choices, all these other things we could do collaboratively. The politicians have blown money on all sorts of projects and other things, CoinGate, you know, the stadium fund obviously has issues. So and instead of saying we're going to do all this and take accountability ourselves for thinking creatively, for cutting in other places, for cutting our own salaries and our own staff salaries, they've said, oh, it's the firefighter. The, you know, the $28,000 a year corrections officer last, last is comment. just doing too well for us. Last comment. Uh, look, in Wisconsin, they passed similar reforms, $400 million in savings. It's going to be over a billion dollars okay. in Ohio. 
It's at the local government level, David, not okay. the state government level. Thanks Go to both of you. Um, be sure on Tuesday night, yeah, uh, on election night, make sure you vote. Also, you can check up on more on this issue by checking out betterohio.org or weareohio.com. And on Tuesday night, be sure to tune in uh, for coverage at 10 and 11 o'clock for the best election coverage in the area. And next Sunday, we switch gears and we focus for Veterans Day on the new Veterans Court in Hamilton County and a special report uh, about uh, veterans from the Civil War. Have a good week. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Dan.